One of the things that I really like as a writer, and I actually have a few already published, that's the Roadhouse Sun series. I've got four books out of a seven part series. I'm working on book five right now. And it is an alternative history set in the 1970s when the Soviet Union and the United States do go to war. To kind of give you a setting for it, if you've ever watched the original version of Red Dawn with Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey, that takes place in all the parts of the United States that are occupied by the Soviet forces. My books take place in all the areas that aren't. Anyway, I really love it when people come up to me and said, I read your book and I loved it. Makes an author feel really great. But if you have been paying any attention to the news lately, I have to express a certain amount of relief and pleasure for the fact that some people have obviously not read my books. And I mean, if you're going to invade a country, even if it's one that's just next door to you, you'd kind of think that you would figure out how to gas up your tanks. An invasion is guaranteed to stall when the tanks run out of gas, when the transports run out of gas, when you can't find your way on a map. And the other thing that I'm dealing with, you know, another way that life is not imitating art, is I came up with some pretty badass, laid-back, ingenious characters in my book. Uh, Doug Cortland, the roadie slash security slash, you know, road manager. He's a former professional wrestler. He's, you know bounced around he is aroused about he's learned he's very street smart very savvy i don't think i would have ever put him in a situation where he would pick up a anti-tank landmine from the middle of the road and carry it off to deposit in the woods with a cigarette dangling out of the corner of his mouth now he's a pretty badass fellow i mean and if i had tried I guarantee people would have said that's just not believable. I watched it happen on the news. And I've got some pretty badass, bold, risky characters. I don't think I would have ever dreamed up a grandmother walking up to armed Russian special force soldiers and hand them handfuls of sunflower seeds and say, oh, please take these, young man. And when you do, know that I am waiting for the chance to see them grow out of your rotting corpse in a Ukrainian field. Have a nice day. And <laughs> these armed-to-the-teeth gigantic men are looking at this little old lady and just... I could not have written that kind of a reaction or interaction. So... Sitting there, reading through it, you know, a few years back when we did have some tensions going on with the Soviet Union, some people asked, you don't think that, you know, life could imitate art? And I said, I really don't think so. But some of the things that were going on at the time were kind of mirroring where my storylines had gone. So that was done with fingers crossed. Looking at how this whole thing is turning out, I'm pretty sure that nobody over in the Kremlin read my books. I'm equally certain that they haven't even read my graphic novels in case the words were too big and they needed to use pictures. They haven't even gotten the audiobooks, which is probably a good thing. Definitely going to impact how I finish the last two books in the series, I can tell you that. Uh, but when I wrote those books, I was born in 1966. I grew up in the Cold War. I grew up when Reagan and Gorbachev were staring each other down. I grew up when the Kremlin leadership, Brezhnev, 
Andropov, Chenyenko. They were getting older and more and more in their dotage and more and more paranoid and more and more senile. And you had no idea how that was going to go. We were brought up to recognize the symbol for a fallout shelter. I'm pretty sure that if I ever showed one of those symbols to somebody now, especially under the age of 30, they wouldn't know what the heck it was. We had to know what to do in the case of a nuclear winter. We had to know how to put up uh, plastic over windows and everything to keep out fallout. We had to know how to store water for X number of days. To this day, I always keep in the back of my mind having enough canned goods for any extended period. And periodically, I will go through my cupboards and get rid of any of the old stuff. Briefly, after the Soviet Union fell apart and the Berlin Wall came down, I kind of breathed a little sigh of relief. And then for a while, I lived in Newfields, New Hampshire. Newfields, New Hampshire is not far from the Seabrook nuclear power plant. And all of this stuff was driven home again after I moved in there because every year I got a wonderful Christmas present from the local civil defense. Calendar outlining any possible evacuation route from the seacoast area in case anything happened to the uh, power plant. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I understand, you know, things happened because I also remember everything that happened over in Chernobyl. Then 9-11 took place. And there was something really interesting about where Newfields was. Kind of an interesting little triangle surrounding me. Seabrook Nuclear Power Plant, Pease International Trade Port, which was still an Air Force base, uh, at least all of the planes that were flying over to Afghanistan were leaving from there. And Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, where U.S. Navy ships and submarines and everything else were being built, repaired, serviced, upgraded, and everything else. So that tossed in an added incentive to make sure that they always sent out not just the calendar, but these little booklets on preparedness suggestions. Figure out the number of people you have in your house. Always have an emergency bag on hand that you can grab and leave with at a moment's notice. And so I did. I also had to have terrorist coverage on my homeowner's insurance. Something I never thought I would live long enough to even think about. So these little things that mercifully I never had to use. In fact, when I sold my house and was clearing it out in the closet, I found those three bags because I had myself and my two sons. And I realized, yeah, I had underwear, shirts, pants, socks, you know, anything that we were going to need. And they suggested burying it different seasons. You know, something that you could grab and go. And I even had to have a plan where I was going to take off to if I had to evacuate that area. That was a whole bunch of what ifs I grew up with and I lived with. And so as much as I can find a certain amount of humor in everything that I'm seeing playing out, I realize that there are millions of people that aren't playing what if, but they're going what now. As grateful as I am that you people are reading my books, even more grateful somebody else hasn't.